There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever, baby. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic sauce, it's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. Ex-love, ex-tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of Pelagic Zone. Do you really? All right, nothing town to fuck all borough. Not you. Your days of giving a shit and being that type of animal were over. Do you really? The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert. Hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. I know that. An ungodly A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound, a clarion call from hell. 
Somehow, you know what it is. A Caprice command the motor carriage. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. The lights are off. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends if you swoop up and catch the tie. Snap, it's released from the blade. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous thick tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare-cut pants. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. The whirling in rags is a hostel cafeteria on the urban coast, frequented by dock workers. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it.
You have no idea who this thing is, do you? It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? There might have been, ten years ago. It's little more than a cadaverous spasm now. It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate uncontested way of life for our species. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, Boite de Nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit, then he made the expression. Some twenty odd years, there is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression, looking good on you or anyone. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. You have some understanding of the near history of disco. The rest is darkness. Aside from the useless fact that the motor carriage outside was a Caprice Canema.
the click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega hit, Don't Worry Your Pretty Little Head. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. A cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold.
Hello, officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Uh, no. Because you're a police officer, sir. I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. You've been here for three days, on official police business, no less. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Could it be because of the drinking? She hasn't had time to put her makeup on. This is her morning cigarette. She looks tired, her beauty waning faster than it ought to at her age. Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. Something stirs in you as she's about to go. Call it an instinct, a need, the need to ask questions. It's like you've said the words a million times before. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Yes. The dock workers are pretty cocky. They think they're police enough. At least here on the coast. I can't say about the rest of the city. It's 51. The current century? Centuries don't have numbers. They have names. And this is the current one. Civilization has existed for 8,000 years, sir. You're right. There is nothing funny about civilization. You're in a hostel, sir. We are in Revachol. Revachol is the disgraced former capital of the world, divided into zones of control under foreign occupation. Half a century after a failed world revolution, 
She is central to our moment in time. You sure look like you're from Revishol. Revishol parties. Her accent suggests she is not from around here. She's from Aranye, another part of the world. There was the usual ruckus. Loud disco music. I couldn't say. It's impossible to hear people speaking from over here. Oh, yes. Various artists. Ostentatious orchestration prime among them. Oh, that. Yeah. Whoa. The less said about oh, oh, the better. Oh, oh, we're huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course, like seven. Life gets hard, but we go on. I don't know about that. At around two o'clock, the disco stopped, and there was a change of pace. A slow, sad song started playing, like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of the time, you were yelling along to it. Yes, there was a church in there. A really small church. Like the smallest, saddest church in the whole world. It was about that. And also... That it doesn't matter anymore and that we're alone now. It was difficult to tell. The song itself was very quiet and soft, but... You sounded like a winded boar, sir. It was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. Then you started screaming and trashed the place. No. It didn't sound like there was a fight. It sounded like someone was trashing their room. A window was smashed. The tape player, probably. The song stopped. And furniture, too. A real destructathon. There was screaming. Then I think uh, you passed out. There was. I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then, around four or five, and that was it. There was the usual ruckus loud disco music. I couldn't say. It's impossible to hear people speaking from over here. Yeah? Glad to have been of assistance. closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on. Still no answer. 
Still nothing. Still, still nothing. Still nothing. Still. stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. Everything is cool between you and this guy. He's a big fan. Make some small talk. A competent work of taxidermy, the white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. This is the great skua. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola, the part of the world you are in right now. The small steel tag says as much. The great skua. Stercoarius skua. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. He's very animated all of a sudden. This seems like a touchy subject. I have three cafeterias to manage. Three. Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm only standing in. She just, you know... His eyes dart from left to right. This man isn't lying, but he is hiding something. So now you're a cop. Oh, forget it. sweetie. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. A 
bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. On the sleeve of his bomber jacket, as well as on its back, are the same enigmatic white rectangles as on your blazer. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. Okay, then. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday, too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Good. But even if you haven't, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? So, the body is still in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. We all feel that way sometimes. There is no such thing as a police officer, I'm afraid. What remains is that there is a dead body in the tree. Someone has to figure out who put it there. If we don't, no one else will. And then, soon after, Dead bodies would be dangling from all the trees. But first, we have to take it down. I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General.
Inspectorate General means internal affairs. What he's saying is he's not from the rat squad and isn't supposed to suspect such things. No need for derogatory terms. They're only doing their job. Yes. They are not just white rectangles. They bear a halogen watermark with the letters RCM and a pattern resembling the street grid of Revachol West. I would ask you to step into the headlights of my motor carriage, but again, it's none of my concern. I just need you to do your job. You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I would advise you to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse, much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. Talk to the manager. Then we go out back and take the body down. After you, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Hello, sweetie. Wait, who's sweetie? You're a handsome man, officer, with your mustache and your chiseled jaw and that silly dimple on your chin. But dear, you're not for me. I'm too old and too married besides. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley crew. Hire her on the spot.
whatever do you mean? Sequence killers? Oh my. But I think you already have a partner, sweetie. A partner who needs you to help him get a corpse down from a tree. I can assure you with absolute certainty, there are no sequence killings taking place in Martinez. Now, gentlemen, no need to squabble. I wouldn't be of much use to you anyway, sweetie. Thank you, but Martinez isn't the most wheelchair accessible place, you see. I'd slow you down. Perhaps another time. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. Oh my, you know where we are, right? That's right, in a hostel called the Whirling in Rags, to be precise. The new Disco dancing, it seems like a lifetime ago. Much has changed, but it is still the most beautiful city in the world. A rare jewel set in the sand between the pines. Everyone says so, even foreigners. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? That's right, dear. How splendid. Here. Take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there, but now she relaxes her shoulders. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government?
Nope. Sadly not. Revishol is what's called a zone of control, under an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have no government of our own, and what democracy we have is market-driven. Meaning, buying is voting. Oh dear. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Rivishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. You were doing quite well up until the end there. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Remembering reality in a word. It's very odd. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. But maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs. And while I'm no doctor, such bouts of amnesia are often temporary. So I, I wouldn't worry too much. Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. No, I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. That's a good point. This doesn't look like rich central. Yes, dear. Uh, I'm a paraplegic. A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries, like falling from a great height or a grenade explosion. No, dear. I'm not quite that old. Although, I was injured in the line of duty. Nothing so glamorous, dear. Though, when I was young, I dreamt of planting the Revisholian flag on some figurative peak. I was a training and development manager at a rapidly expanding mail-order shoe company. You'd think it would be a safe job, but I had to be everywhere and, well, once I happened to be under some faulty scaffolding. I was lucky. This was almost 20 years ago, and I was compensated exceptionally well. One can only dream of such payoffs nowadays. No problem. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. <laughs> the 
The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gart, right? You run. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41. Are you kidding me? Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. This sounds like something you can use to call this Sylvie later. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. His face expresses profound doubt in your having this. Ask him about the body's location before asking if he killed him. People give up information in the more innocuous questions, which you can later use in the more sinister ones, not vice versa. Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. This man means the heavy cavalry of the innocent Franco-Negro sweeping over the plains and nations of the enemies of mankind, fifth century style. Unified currency and the concept of cool came in their wake. They wore lamella and carried guns. But first and foremost, Franco-Nigerian heavy cavalry was really, really wide. That hole in the fence must be enormous. Haven't you asked me that already? What is it with you and this woman? She has nothing to do with this. Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Thank you. I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. Now, what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the lynching. Forget it. I don't know who killed him. 
I'm not the police. That's your job. This is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they, if he doesn't know? Oh, people are saying it was the Union dock workers, that it was a lynching. The locals, the customers, the people who eat here, a lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Did the debarders themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbor company, I hear. A mercenary. The Unionisters probably thought they'd send a message. What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him! The lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook he's been scribbling in. Let's go. Not so fast. You owe me a hundred and thirty real. As you blow this joint, behind you a whiny voice shouts. Real mature, man. Real mature. A colorful piece of plastic is dangling from his carabineer. Hmm, makes your fingers itch. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. You've just picked up some magnesium. This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portrait. Use magnesium to heal your morale if you have morale damage. It's a dock worker's ID, doubling as a shift card and a job permit. A young, able-bodied man stares back at you from the photo. Santiago S. John. You fumble with the spring-loaded gate of the carabineer, but to no avail. The dangling items refuse to come loose. They just jingle in an ever louder manner. Like fucking sleigh bells. What are you doing? You're gonna get caught. Stop finger-fucking him, officer! I'm responsible for these oaves and their stuff. Even Sleepy there. Yes, sure. A criminal. To be honest, he's correct. Police officers generally don't go around appropriating possessions from people. Let's go. It was just an idea. Come on, relax everyone. It didn't turn out well. Doesn't mean it was a bad idea. Or that you shouldn't appropriate stuff. Yes?
the RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? Of course. What can I help you with? Me? I am just a gardener. She hides it well, but behind the sweat and dirt there is something else in her rigid posture. Is there? The quickness of the reply certainly does not prove you wrong. I am working. I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. Well, as you probably know, there's a corpse hanging from a tree there. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My head is about to explode from all the salts I've had to inhale. Salts? Ammonium salts? Perhaps useful for later. Of course. Where to? It's there. In the yard, right through the hole in the fence. Even all the way over here, there's a drop of death in the spring air. There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements, not a lot really. The harbour gates, some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store too. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there and a fish market, but that got closed down ages ago. What do you mean? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. This intersection is called Roundabout North. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. No problem. She's very well composed. Back straight. Of course. I won't hold you back. If there's a corpse, then you're going to need those gloves for the autopsy. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Who's got this? If 
there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Sweating profusely, his eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Fuck that! Puno, yeah! Right in the mouth hole! Shit himself? Know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. All right, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. The kid moves his hands like a basketball player dribbling fast. Irregular speech patterns, overconfidence. Could this kid be on drugs? This warrants further investigation into this Kuno. Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Shitload, pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno! This is where you quickly ask him questions. Real cop questions. Like a cop. Kuno's fuck gimp. Kuno uses the fuck gimp for target practice. He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. Kuno knows what you meant. Kuno's not a snitch. That's all. Trying to make Kuno sing into the popo phone. Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno! Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. I don't know. Some fucking... Mesk or... or I don't know. Some other place. Night City? Kuno is in fucking Night City. There is no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction novel. Why you gotta be riding Kuno's ass? You haven't been where Kuno's been. You haven't been in Kuno's head. You wanna know where Kuno was? You wanna know what Kuno's been fucking up to? Don't tell him that, Kuno! It's lame! It's not fucking lame! Kuno's building Kuno City! Night City! Rage City! The City of Rage! That's it! And it's not lame! Lame! That's the name of Kuno City, bitch! Get the fuck off Kuno's back! This shit ain't about that! It's impossible to deduce what it is about. At least for the moment. If it's important, it'll come up later. Focus on the case. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f Yeah, the kingdom of Kuno. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give Kuno's Kuno pig. It's always Kuno. Never I. Clearly the kid's using the third person perspective as a shield. Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. 
Don't throw that book shit at Kuno. Kuno knows you're lying. Trying to get Kuno hooked on the book. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's going to put his hands on you! Everyone can hear. You need to get the hell out of here before. Yeah, get out of here before the Kuno beats the shit out of you. Yeah, that's right. Drag your fat ass out of here, fat boy, before Kuno fucks you. by the Kuno. We all right. You want to get fucked again? Come back. Yes? The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Active decay. It's okay to throw up with his arm. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cop's gonna blow, Kuno! Active decay. It's okay to throw up with his arm. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cop's gonna... There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it... The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar. You feel a great force ringing from your stomach. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. The smell of Commodore Red rises from the pool. Among it, distilled spirit and bits of shish kebab. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. That young woman, the gardener, mentioned she used salts for the smell. If she doesn't have any, there might be some in the Frit store nearby. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the wipe check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them.
I can't believe it's snowing again. It felt like springtime just a few days ago. Sure, I'm done with them. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. The ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. Are you okay, officer? You're facing tough odds here. It's aggravated further by alcohol withdrawal. No, this is a two-man assignment because it needs two officers to complete. I need your help. You need to get your shit together. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it for special bonuses and effects. Give it half an hour, get yourself together, then come back and have another go. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. Despair creeps into you, getting fat on your weakness. Whatever noble intentions you once had as a police officer, it's eaten them all up now. You're still coming up with sentences. That's a step up from total annihilation, right?
I don't dispute that you have been charged with protecting the people of a particularly challenging district. But poverty does not make one a loser. Poverty is just poverty. Nothing you can say would make you feel any better now. Cop gives up the detective genre for social realism. Another police officer resigned from the RCM following a nervous breakdown. He now lives under a bridge, drinking and occasionally throwing excrement at passers-by, shouting, I never loved that woman. When asked to comment, former colleagues objected to the theory that his psychological disintegration was precipitated by his wife leaving him. It's because the furrows lost that match, said Captain Patolomy Price, once the man's superior officer. It's because he couldn't get a big gun from acquisitions and, anyway, police work really burns you out after a while, satellite officer Jean Vitmer the deranged former cop's partner, commented. Sergeant Matt Torson, another former colleague, did not propose any theories, merely saying, whatever happened to him wasn't about birds. He got fucked, that's all. <laughs>